This video is about the best way to replace a sky in Photoshop. Now there are four main reasons why a Photoshop sky swap can end up looking wrong or just downright bizarre. So this video is not about the quickest or the easiest kind of one shot method, but it's about the best way to actually swap skies and have it look realistic and believable. So let's take a look at what these four things are and what you can do to make sure you get them right so that you can naturally replace one sky with another and have it look like the real thing. So I've already opened up an image in Photoshop and I've already copied and pasted a sky into a new layer. So here's the original image with the, uh, the main sort of background that we're going to be using. And here's the sky that we're going to be uh, copying and uh, merging into the, uh, into the background layer. So quite quickly, we come on to the first thing that you need to get right uh, when blending a new sky into a layer and that is to create an accurate layer mask. So, you know, there's not one best solution, not one best method for actually creating an accurate layer mask. It's going to depend on your image, of course. Uh, so, you know, depending on the circumstance and depending on what your background image looks like, then you might need to use luminosity masking or even the pen tool if you've got a lot of buildings, for example with uh, straight edges that you can use the pen tool to create a selection. Uh, for this example, however, I can just use the uh, quick selection tool because we've got some nice clean cut lines and there's a lot of contrast between the foreground and the sky. So I think the pen to, uh, the uh, quick selection tool is going to work quite well. So to do that, I'm just going to just drag the tool through the sky and the marching ants have picked up the edge quite nicely apart from they've kind of over selected the, uh, into the ocean here. So I'm just going to hold Alt or Option on the keyboard to remove this part of the image from the selection. And that looks to be pretty good. So with the selection made, now the next step is just to turn this into a layer mask on the sky layer. So I'm just going to reactivate the uh, sky layer there, layer one. And with the selection still active, I'm just going to hit the button down here to add a new layer mask. And then that selection is going to get loaded directly into the uh, sky layer. So because of the position of the sky now, the uh, you know, obviously it, it's not in the right place. It looks a bit weird. So what we can do to shift the sky up into position is just use the move tool. but one thing we need to do before that is just uh, unlink the layer mask from the layer itself. So just to do that, click this little uh, chain link icon between the mask and the layer itself in the layers panel. That will disappear. And that means that we can now move the sky. Whoops, actually I've selected the, uh, the mask. So I need to click on the layer and move the sky layer up and then just pop it into position wherever we want to place it. So I think I'll eliminate some of that darker cloud near the horizon and let's, let's place it here. That looks okay. So that's the first thing that you need to do and get right. And that's create a good, accurate layer mask. So again, depending on the type of image, you might need to use luminosity masking or you might be able to get away with just using the quick selection tool if you've got a good contrast between the edges of the sky and everything else. Now that brings us nicely on to the second thing that people get wrong um, most of the time, and uh, you know which which needs to be gotten right to to end up with a realistic looking image, and that is to balance the brightness between the new sky and the foreground. As it stands, the uh, the sky is too dark for the foreground, and you can usually tell that because it kind of looks a bit weird and HDR-ish already. So the way that I'm just going to balance things up is uh, with a couple of curves adjustments. I'm going to add one in between the background and the sky. So let's just add a curves adjustment there. And now I'm going to add another curves adjustment on top of the sky in the layers panel, but I need to clip this adjustment to the sky so that only affects the sky and not everything else. So on the keyboard, I'm holding Alt or Option and with the mouse cursor in between the two layers like that, you'll see the cursor changes to this square with an arrow. And now when I click, you'll see the 
adjustment layer has shifted to the right and it's got this little arrow here to indicate that it's clipped to that layer therefore only affecting that layer. So what we can do with this now is use each curve to adjust the brightness of the sky separately to the brightness of the foreground. So the, the sky was a little bit dark so let's uh, just brighten it up a little bit with this curve. Careful not to overexpose the highlights and yeah it's probably still a little bit off so let's now darken the background and we can do that with this first curves adjustment down here let's just darken the well darken the foreground of the image but it's the background layer so let's just do that just a little bit and yeah again depending on the image the amount that you need to brighten or uh, darken is going to change but this is how I personally do it and how I recommend doing it uh, and you can just do it by eye until the uh, the sky and the foreground just have a natural looking balance of uh, you know brightness so yeah I think somewhere around about here is going to work so once you've balanced the brightness between the foreground and the background the uh, the third thing that needs to be got right is balancing the color so bringing this bright colorful beautiful sunrise sky into this uh, otherwise uh, less colorful foreground image uh, you know this again it, it just doesn't match up right because these colors from the sky would be reflecting in the foreground so here's one way that you can actually just take some of that warmth from the sky and embed it into the foreground. So I'm going to select the brush tool and I'm going to hold on the keyboard Alt or Option and that's going to change the mouse cursor to this eyedropper tool and then I'm just going to select a kind of warmish color from the sky. So I go for that sort of peachy color there and I'll just click on the top layer here so that the next thing that I add is going to go on top of that and then from the adjustment layers uh, menu here I'm going to add a solid color layer and that's going to be added with that color that I sampled with the color picker. So with this layer added there are a few things that you can do or a few different ways of blending this color into the image. The first is just to scroll through some of these um, different blend modes. So multiplier is a good candidate. So it looks a bit weird at the moment, but don't worry about that. Um, let's just test multiply for f uh, first. So select multiply from the blend modes and then to sort of blend it in a bit more naturally, we'll just reduce the opacity until the foreground stops looking weird and overcolored which I think is probably about here. So notice how the water goes from that sort of blue cool looking effect uh, to having a bit of warmth. So you might not want this to be applied in the sky as well. If so, then you can just drag this color fill layer down beneath the sky layer. And so it only affects the uh, foreground there. And yeah, I think yeah, that's probably going to do us well. Uh, I will just show you a couple of other different things that you can do with the blend modes here. So another couple of options are overlay or soft light. They're going to change the uh, the light and the contrast in the image, however, whereas multiply um, is going to have less of an effect. So because we're selecting a, a light warm color, using overlay or soft light is actually going to brighten the foreground quite significantly. Uh, so, yeah, again, different methods for different images. I would recommend trying each one um, if you're going through this process and then just seeing which one looks best. And if, uh, you know, if multiply, soft light, hard light, uh, sorry, soft light or overlay aren't looking great, another one to try is just the normal blend mode and then reduce the opacity down to a really, really low value, probably less than 10%. So again, this is just picking up some of the color and putting it into that foreground. Uh, and yeah, it's just sort of embedding that color 
so that when you come to further process the image through your workflow, then it's going to have that seed of color as if it was there from the beginning. So I think for this particular shot, though, I liked multiply. So let's go back to multiply and then go back up to probably, I think it was around 50%. Oh, that looks a bit dark now. Now I've seen the others. Let's go 40. Now that we've masked the sky in, we've balanced the brightness and we've balanced the color. Now this balance of color has actually darkened the foreground a little bit so we can come back and maybe just tweak the brightness of the foreground just brighten it just a touch so I think about there is going to work now something that you can do obviously at any stage uh, with any of these adjustments is mask them in or out as appropriate so I think what I would like to do here I do like the effect of this color fill layer on the rocks However, it's a bit strong in the water, so I'm just going to take a black brush and click on the layer mask for the color fill layer. Increase the brush size a bit, increase the opacity, and I'm just going to sort of mask it out from the water a bit. Of course, we need a, a black brush for that, not a white one. So, yeah, we're still taking on some of that color, but it's not quite as strong in the uh, in the water there so i do like the water to look nice and white when it's kind of rushing through the foreground like this so there we go that i think is a nice balance of color between the foreground and the sky now if you've got the type of image which has got a lot of still water in the foreground or has got any kind of reflections then you're going to need to take that into account as well so you're going to need to match the reflections in the foreground with the sky uh, we don't have to deal with that in this example, but again, that's just something to keep in mind depending on the image that you're working on. Now, this looks pretty good so far, but there is just one final, uh, one final thing that we need to consider, and that brings me on to thing number four. So I mentioned four things at the top of the video, and that is to fix or slightly adjust, if needed, the uh, transition between the horizon in the sky and the foreground. So if we just sort of zoom in over here, I mean, I'm, I'm more concerned about what's what's happening on the horizon with the, uh, with the sea there, because some of this dark color here in the cloud, we, uh, that's gonna have a different effect on the water compared to this lighter patch over here with less of that dark cloud. So here's what I would do to uh, to work on making that sort of blend a bit more naturally. So I'm going to add an empty layer, a new layer. And I think maybe let's start with this on soft light. I've got the brush tool selected and I'm going to sample a sort of darkish color from this patch of cloud first. And okay, start with the low opacity and I'm going to go with a brush size that's going to kind of uh, just go a little bit into the sky and into the foreground. Or oh, it's not really the foreground, but into the water. And I'm just brushing through the horizon there so that this color kind of is going to affect both the water and the, uh, the cloud. So let's just see what that's done. Okay, maybe I'm going to need a bit of a stronger opacity on the brush. And let me just see if overlay... Actually, I think overlay is going to work better for this. So let me start this layer again. So let's add that new layer. It's going to overlay. Still got that same color sampled. And I'm just going to brush through the water here. And you can see as I do that now, the water is actually taking on that kind of warm purpley color from the sky as if it's reflecting directly in in the uh, in the water there now when I get over towards this sort of lighter patch I don't want to use the same color so I'm going to sample a slightly lighter back to that sort of peachy color there and then use that in this patch over here to blend that in and then I'm just going to see if I can tidy up 
the transition between those two bits just in here. And now let's look at the overall effect of that. So, you know, here's the before, and it, it just kind of looks a bit weird that the blue ocean has not taken on any of the color reflecting from the sky there. But now with this layer on top, with uh, you know, having sampled those colors from the sky and then brushed them in, that just helps to, uh, to create that natural looking blend. So just to recap, the four things that you need to get right when blending one sky into another in Photoshop. Number one, you need to create an accurate mask so that you don't have halos or you don't have the sky uh, bleeding over into the foreground. Uh, two, you need to balance the brightness between the sky and the foreground so that they actually look natural and realistic and like the sky isn't darker than the foreground or vice versa. And three, you need to do a similar thing um, as number two, but this time instead of balancing light, we need to balance color and reflections. And then four, you just need to pay close attention to the horizon and make sure that the uh, the, the colors in the horizon in the foreground, in the original foreground, actually match up um, and reflect that color from the clouds over there on the horizon in the background. So thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, then there should be an icon on the screen right now that will allow you to do that. Just click that to subscribe and you will be notified by YouTube every time I publish a new video in the future. Thanks for watching. See you later.